Here we are with Matthew Steeples. We are on a Jimmy Savile week and we are going to be discussing Savile and the BBC show, The Dramatisation, The Reckoning. Huge thank you to Matthew for coming on. Matthew is the proprietor of the Steeple Times. His links are in the description. Uh, Matthew, what's that splendid background you've got there? Well, greetings to you, Sean, from the south of France. Um, here I am near sunny Saint-Tropez and uh, sitting in uh, next to in the garden where I sit every morning and have a glass of rosé or whatever I otherwise choose. And um, here we are. So it's all very civilized down here. We've had uh, Le Voile, which is the sailing week, and we've had the wonderful magic carpet boat, which has been here, um, which belongs to the man who uh, worked for the Betancourt family, and he inherited 160 million pounds, and he uh, spent it on boats. And um, he sails his boat. He's from Wales, and he's a wonderful gentleman. And him and his lovely wife, Christina, delightful, wonderful people. Um, they did very well in this, and there were there were many classic sailing boats here. The Gettys are here with their boats. Um, October is actually the most wonderful time to be here because um, it's a bit quieter and you don't get the other tourists. And because of the situation, the, t the tragic situation in Ukraine, the Russians are no longer here either, which actually, in my view, I think it makes an improved place. And here I am. I brought the magnet on tour. The magnet <laughs> with me. The magnet is magnetic wherever it goes. I've even bought the magnet, a magnet from Saint Tropez. I don't know it yet. They've had a postcard, but um, you'll be getting a postcard too. But um, here we are. So, shout out! Shout out to the magnet and the magneteers. Have you had a chance to watch the reckoning yet, Matthew? Um, I have seen clips and elements of it. I've read a lot about it, and I have a lot to talk to you about it. Um, I think that there is much to analyze about this program because this program has complexities that need to be talked about. So I don't know if it will help you if I talk about what I have come to know about it first, if that helps. So, you know, Savile, who I think is the 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 last latter part of his name vile is the most important bit to remember vile that should be what goes down in history for this dreadful man who died in 2011 aged 84. at the time of his death there was much mourning you know i remember people buying his car i i corresponded with a man who bought his rolls royce Matthew, there's a weird Matthew, there's a weird there's a weird echo. Since your phone made a, a, a notification sound, oh. there's there's become there's started to become a weird echo. Oh well I've turned the phone off. Do you have your headset? Oh, you want my uh, right uh, just a moment. <laughs> oh, we, were, we, we were all we were all good until we started talking about Savile. And then it, oh. it, it, it just started to make this weird echo. Right, just a moment. It's all right, we'll fix this. Does this, does this work? Is that better? Five, 5,000, 4,000, 3,000, say, say something. Hello, Speak. good evening. Yeah, it's Hello. gone. Perfect, you fixed it. All right, so I'm gonna, I'll start that again. I'll say Matthew. All right, here we go. Matthew, have you okay. seen The Reckoning? Um, I have yet to watch it, but I have seen clips of it and I have read a lot about it. I've spoken with a lot of people and obviously I know people connected with it. Um, the This program, The Reckoning, um, is something that um, has obviously attracted a lot of interest, particularly on your channel, I believe. You've had a lot of discussions of it. You know, it's a four-part drama. Steve Coogan and um, Lucy Mangan in The Guardian rightly said, you know, Coogan was born to play creeps. He is chillingly brilliant as Savile. And, you know, I met Steve Coogan when he was in a wonderful film called Coffee and Cigarettes. 
Um, and, you know, I think him as Alan Partridge and all the rest of it and all the other things he's done, he is a wonderful, brilliantly talented person. He is fantastic as an actor. Now, what I found very interesting, which I didn't know until today, um, is that, um, that the program was made by ITV, even though it's shown on the BBC. So it's actually, you can't blame the BBC if you don't like it, because it's actually an ITV production independently made. So that, that's something I thought was relevant, which people have not realized probably. But I would like to say a few things. You know, Savile, vile, and vile is the word. And it, that's the only part of his name that should be remembered. Forget the first bit. And it's nothing to do with Savile Row. He's just a truly repugnant man. Died in 2011, age 84. At the time, there was much mourning. This horrible, horrible man was one of the world's worst predators in all senses. And I know I have to be careful what I say, of, so I will not use certain words. Though Those words should be used. He was never arrested or charged with anything despite all the rumors and suspicions. He went to meet his maker unpunished. He was buried at an angle in a gold coffin to look out to sea. This arrogant creep had his headstone subsequently vandalized. I, I believe he deserved that. He was moved elsewhere. I don't know where his body is now or whether he was cremated and whatever else. He wore his Catholicism as ostentatiously as the innocent children wore the badges from Jim will fix it, he doled out. Savile got away with it. He knew how to play the system. He had his Monday club with the police in Leeds. And we've talked about that previously. He befriended prime ministers and princes. He even got the keys to Broadmoor thanks to Edwina Curry in 1988, when he was appointed to a government task force. He even introduced poor innocent Frank Bruno, a, a man who did no harm, to the Yorkshire Ripper Peter Sutcliffe at Broadmoor in 1991. The boxer later claimed he had been tricked into being photographed with that monster. Savile planned it, he said. It was not a nice thing to do to me. And I, I think Frank Bruno is a it was was tricked. I totally believe him. Programs that this program explores his career from 1962 as a DJ on the Northern Club circuit through his rise to becoming a powerful and beloved figure, and he made sure people loved him. Now, you and I didn't love him. I didn't know him, but this man. It shows according to. Um, Lucy Mangan of The Guardian. The scenes of abuse are reportedly handled very well. She comments, I don't think I've seen many dramas that evoke that particular terror so well. Importantly, it manages to do this while still showing almost nothing of the physical events. Coogan is brilliant in the role. He is a fine actor as well as a fine impressionist. And the part of Savile gives him the chance to blend the two in perfect proportion. He captures the mannerisms, the voice, the vibe. Um, and he, he, he replies without ever veering anywhere near caricature. He shows us evidence slipping and sliding over each other, depending on absolute depravity in whose service they were all deployed. But she also criticizes it. She says this program comes out of um, a series that also, um, it is a careful recounting of what we already know and posts no more explanation of how Savile came to be and how he managed to operate untrammeled for so long than we have already learned or would intuit alone. The suggestion based on scant evidence that his predilections were due to the Duchess not loving him enough, that's his mother, 
the Duchess, as he called her, as an unwanted seventh child. And that's something I didn't know until today. I didn't realize he was one of seven children. I, I had no idea about that. It's to indulge our worst impulses, to blame the nearest, easiest person, the mother. I will say, finally, he was in fact nothing more than sheer evil. He was a cigar-chomping con man, con man and a monster. And that's, that's, that's my introduction to whatever you'd like to say. So I, I, I'll take whatever you want to ask me next. Yeah, well said. So my dad was... Uh, and cheers to the magnet yet again. My dad played a bit part in episode two. And he was just, he came on and did yeah. on the live the other night and talked about his experience with Coogan and what it was like on the set. Now, in episode two, they portrayed Savile as a lone wolf who picked up a young girl in a He's corridor. And this girl then committed suicide. Now, the real story is that girl, her name was Claire McAlpine. And she kept a diary... And we interviewed, in our documentary on Touchable, we had interviewed her friend, a fellow Top of the Pops yeah. dancer, Miss Gold. And Miss Gold said, mm. she read the diary, and there was a huge pop star in there. We suspect it was David Bowie. There was a DJ um, in there as well as Savile. And she said in her diary, and Miss Gold confirmed this, that the BBC used to get the girls drunk, and then they'd select who was going to go with who. But it didn't show any of that in the reckoning. So do you think they're trying to pass the buck onto Savile for all this and not take any responsibility themselves? Well, I think, you know, that you're completely correct to say that. You know, the BBC allowed this man to operate. They did nothing to stop him. They enabled him because he was a star. Now, there was one person at the BBC who did try and stop him. He was the governor called Sir Roger Jones. He was chairman also of Children in Need from 1999 to 2002. He banned the monster from fundraisers. And I will later read out a bit from him. I'm, I'll carry on talking to you now. But basically, he did not allow this. Ephraim Hardcastle, the Daily Mail, reported on this um, yesterday. Um, he actually made a statement. I'm trying to see if I can find it immediately. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm hopeless with technology. So um, where is it? Where is it? It's somewhere here. I've got like files of articles. Uh, here we go. So he said, when I was with Children in Need, we took the decision that we didn't want him anywhere near the charity. And we just stepped up our child protection policies. I think we were recognized he was a pretty creepy sort of character. And then Ephraim Hardcastle of the Daily Mail says, alas, Roger was a lone voice crying in the bead wilderness. Meanwhile, at Buckingham Palace, you know, and there was a time, I don't know what year it was, he tried to bring in a 14-year-old girl who wanted to visit Buckingham Palace in the boot of a car. Can you imagine this creep was smuggling people in? The Queen's second private secretary lord moore said we we do not want taint by association with that odious man so there were people out there who were trying to stop this there were people speaking out so there were good people within organizations but of course there were so many others that just happily enabled and kept him going you can see the boats going around in the background i'm terribly sorry for the noise but it's i can't stop i can't stop boats yeah um, there's, there's, the there's, boat hardly any noise. It's, it's, there's hardly any noise yeah. it's fine yes so it shows in the reckoning then it shows the value of savile to places like the bbc because he's down with the kids and he's friends with the kinks the beatles mm -hmm. do you think matthew it's a case of he was worth so much money to them, the value of that was more than what they cared about the suffering and, protect, and pain. And protecting the, pe the people, the people, the innocent people that he was taking into those studios and abusing in the background. They turned the blind eye because it suited them, as they have done with certain other people who 
are still alive and I would like those people to be brought to justice before they die but um, we're not allowed to talk about that because um, that's how it works but um, I do believe there are other people who have worked with the BBC who are equally bad who are alive so why don't we bring those people to justice whilst they're alive instead of making up for this nonsensical situation of this old man who's now dead and we can't do anything about him you know there is nothing more that can be done to punish him because he's dead you know there's that other one who's about to possibly get parole in January again we, we've talked about I don't know whether I'm allowed to mention his name the we're on about Gary Glitter Gary, Gary Glitter. Glitter yes yeah so yeah, that we can talk about star, Gary that part that Gary Glitter is about to get parole yet again. You know, he is going up for parole, and that man is a monster. He is evil, he is wicked, he is appalling, and he has done terrible, evil things to innocent people. And he should not be allowed parole unless he can prove he is someone who is a reformed character you know i did a program the other day myself with a man called ben gunn mr gunn and i have been in touch for over over 10 years mr gunn murdered somebody aged 12 and he went to prison he was he, his his own family he'd suffered a murder of, of the, uh, another member of his family he was put into a care home by his his father because his father couldn't deal with him he was meant to be kept in prison for 12 years. He was kept there for 32 years. This man wrote to me about the case of the murder in Liverpool of poor, the, the poor Jamie Bulger. And, you know, he had views on that case. And this man said, you know, well, you know, he, it, the, 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 the Venables boy, you know, he deserves rights because if he is a reformed person, he should be let out. You know, it's the same with Glitter. Glitter, if Glitter can prove that Glitter is reformed, Glitter has served his sentence, he should be allowed out. I don't like Glitter. I think Glitter is evil. I think he's a monster. But if Glitter can prove he's uh, reformed, he should be allowed out. But I don't think Glitter is capable of proving he's reformed because the last time they let him out, he went straight onto this internet thing and started downloading horrible pictures which shows that the parole system doesn't work the people to be criticized are actually not gary glitter the people who should be criticized are the parole system because the system should not allow out somebody who is clearly going to reoffend. they have to assess the you know the, the capability of those people of to be able, whether they can be rehabilitated within the community and that is all I think it should be done in all of these cases. It's it's shocking and appalling what's going on with glitter. And in the light of this Savile, and Sav Vile, as I think we should call him, because he is vile, um, you know, this is appalling. And um, I think the lack of interrogation by the BBC into this man's activities is a shame on the BBC um, and you know they, they protected and they enabled him but there should also be more analysis into the, into the role of the National Health Service their management in failing to act when he abused within their hospitals there should be more analysis into Fleet Street editors who didn't do anything because you know he was a national treasure there should be more analysis into the politicians who did nothing and befriended him. And these were protestations and they were ignored from members of the public who were victims. They were totally ignored. It is a disgrace. Well, I'm glad you've brought Gary Glitter up because me and Jen were watching some Savile earlier and it showed this TV show where he had Gary Glitter on it. And they both sat down with their arms around girls that looked very young. Anyway, when Gary Glitter got in trouble for having indecent videos with kids in them, Savile defended him. I'll read you what he said. 
Okay. Now, Gary, all he did was take his computer into PC World to get it repaired. They went into his hard drive, saw all these dodgy pictures, and told the police, and the police oh. then, oh, we've got a famous person. Oh, my goodness, yes, we'll have them. But Gary has not sold them, has not tried to sell them, not tried to show them in public or anything like that. It was for his own gratification. Whether it was right or wrong is, of course, it's up to him as a person. But they didn't do anything wrong, but they are demonised. And, of course, if you ever said that to a copper, what's Gary Glitter done wrong? Well, nothing really. He's just sat at home watching these dodgy, dodgy films. He was like that, but he wasn't public, and he didn't do anything. So he, he, he said that Gary getting busted with these videos was Gary's business, and they should leave him alone, basically. Well, that is utterly unacceptable in 1984, and it's definitely unacceptable in 2023. And, you know, if, if Gary Glitter chose to take his computer to a computer shop and um, things were found on his computer, that's his own fault, isn't it? You know, if he kept his computer in his own home, he wouldn't have been caught. Stupid man. He's a moron. He's worse than the village idiot. Should be locked in the village barn. He's, he's an absolute twerp. The guy is thick absolutely moronic behavior but thank god he did because that got him caught so we should celebrate the fact that he took his stupid computer <laughs> to computer world pc world or whatever it's called and thank god that, that they some 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 person there recognized him and thought oh i'll top him in good for them they deserve a met they deserve a jim will fix it badge <laughs> they're the ones that deserve a badge let's give them the badge you know they, 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 they caught him they actually deserve a prize for being you know expose of the year so that's how I see that I think uh, why on earth if you're going to be one of these weird people that, that do things like that why do you go and hang your computer in um, throw your computer away and get a new one you know what is I realize there is a lot wrong. I don't understand these people, and we I'm not going to use the word because I know I'm not allowed to use the word on your channel. But what is wrong with these people that they think that they can take their computer to a computer shop? Are you cuckoo? Were you born in a ditch? <laughs> Honestly, absolutely stupid behavior. If if you are going to be into that kind of thing. You don't go and expose it to a computer shop. It's completely mad. I don't understand why you would do that. So do you fear that Gary Glitter's going to get out and he's not going to be reformed again and he's going to get back into his old ways? I think they. I think that this parole board will have to be a lot more careful this time round because of the outrage the first time round. So I think they may be a little more careful about him. Um, I hope they are a little more careful about him because he should not be allowed into any community because he's clearly not reformable. Glitter is somebody who I don't believe to be capable of being reformed because he's already repeatedly shown that he does it again and again. You know, he's done it in Thailand, he's done it in other places. This man is not somebody who shows remorse for his crimes. He is not safe to be allowed to be near children, in my view. Well said. What do you think about Jimmy Savile's relationship with Rolf Harris, who died this year? Well, as you know, I know victims of Rolf Harris. Rolf Harris was one of the most wicked, evil people I've ever come across. I've only ever met him a couple of times, but that wicked, evil man, you know got away with it for far too long and he he you know he was allowed to paint the queen you know there are so many talented artists in the royal academy who could have painted the queen instead they allowed that piece of dreg that detritus who he can't even paint his paintings are disgusting i never liked his paintings i didn't like his weird wife she's a, a oddity and as for that daughter shame on her absolutely appalling man and um you know it's absolutely sickening that you know rolf harris 
Jimmy Savile and all the rest of that little crew. And there's a few more of them who are still alive, but we won't say their names because I better not. Hope you're enjoying the podcast. There's a word from our sponsor, Shady Rays. Check them out. Gear up for the season ahead with quality shades built to last. Our friends at Shady Rays have you covered with premium polarized shades and quick swap snow goggles that won't break the bank. Shady Rays is an independent sunglasses company that offers an rival product that's just as good as any expensive pair we've worn. Durable frames and world-class optics for all outdoor adventures. And if you're into winter sports, the quick swap snow lenses move effortlessly between full sun to low light environments. And these shades hide a multitude of sins since having the little man. Shady Rays offers the most insane protection in all of eyewear. Every pair of sunglasses is backed by lost or broken replacements. If you lose or break your pair, even on day one, they told us they will send you a brand new pair, no questions asked. Wear your Shady Rays with confidence because they have your back long after your purchase. If you don't love your Shady Rays, exchange for a new pair or return them for free within 30 days. There's no risk when you shop. The team always has your back with personal and fast support. Exclusively for our listeners, Shady Rays is giving out an amazing deal for the season. Go to ShadyRays.com and use code SEAN, S-H-A-U-N. For 50% off two plus pairs of polarized sunglasses, try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over a quarter million people. Thanks for supporting our sponsor. Back to the podcast. Cheers. But um, once, they, once they're dead, perhaps uh, the stories about them will come out. So let's wait for the real truth. Unfortunately, I can't say it right now. Yeah, there was some disturbing footage which showed Savile reading a letter submitted by a little girl named Lynn requesting to watch Rolf Harris as he created one of his famous paintings. The young girl is seen on stage with both of them and Savile says to Harris, if he may leave her in your charge and Harris pipes back, safely leave her in my capable hands here. And then once the drawing is complete, Savile rejoins them on the stage and Rolf tells Savile, she's anxious to run away, and Savile then jokes that he has got to get hold of her fast, and and then Harris says, "You stay here and enjoy it, girl," and it's very uh, disturbing indeed. Just you know, in light of the, what was going on behind the scenes. Well, well, if you if you listen to the footage of people who were abused by Harris, he he liked to encourage his own daughter to bring home young people who he did similar things to. These two had no moral compass. They were warped of mind. They were sick in the head. They're disgraceful, evil people. And thank God they're both dead. Now, Maggie Thatcher, she had Jimmy Savile at Thatcher's year after year. What, what's your perspective on that? Um, well, I think that um, Mr. Savile, or Sir Jimmy Savile, as his title was, um, was able to con prime ministers and princes. He was able to get himself into all sorts of audiences. Um, I think the advisors around these people were unwise to allow this, but this man, because of his power at the BBC, was somebody they had to take seriously. I think the BBC has more to answer than actually those individuals. Um, I think the idiot Edwina Curry giving him the keys to Broadmoor was more unacceptable because that allowed him to conduct abuse. I don't think Margaret Thatcher or King Charles can be blamed for his conducting any uh, particular examples of abuse. But by allowing him into Broadmoor, Edwina Curry gave him the keys to a facility where he could conduct physical abuse of patients in that place. He conducted abuse of people who had cancer in hospitals. He conducted abuse of people in morgues. He, he didn't care if it was a boy, a girl, a dog or a cat. He, he, he really was indiscriminate. This is one of the worst offenders of this type ever known to man. I don't think we can blame Margaret Thatcher or King Charles for that. Um, they, they, they were misled like many others. He, I remember as a child, I used to love watching Jim will fix it. 
<laughs> girl who we knew, and she wrote something from the BBC, and he arranged it. And I got jealous that I didn't get to see this. Uh, you know, I didn't get my letter accepted to Jim or Fix It. Thank God I didn't. I don't know whether you did. You write to Jim or Fix It as a I child? I didn't. Sean? I didn't know. What What did you request? I don't know. I can't even remember. <laughs> so long to go. But thank God it didn't happen. Uh, I wouldn't want to go near his knee, would I? <laughs> you know, <laughs> horrible little monster. Um, but no, this local girl, I remember her. Um, she she wrote and she got to go and see this sand thing, the, the, the thing that dug into the sand. It was a BBC drama. I can't remember what it was, but anyway. She got on it, and we were all jealous of her, and we thought it wasn't fair that we didn't get to go on it, but she did. But thank God we didn't. We got lucky. One of the survivors, she said that when she was put on Savile's knee, Savile wasn't wearing any underwear, and you could feel his apparatus um, mm. getting, you know, what? Yes, yes. well, he... he 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 was a monster he was a maniac he was evil and he carried on as if he could just do whatever he wanted and look in life he got away with it but in death he will be remembered ever ever more as a monster it's not exactly a great legacy to have so um goodbye you know this criticism of him that comes for this program, is it, is it good enough? The criticism, that was the question that um, the lady Lucy Mangan asks in the Guardian. Is it have they criticised him enough? Probably not. Um, we need more criticism of him, but equally we need to look at what's going on now. So all the existing people who are currently being watched and talked about they need to be dealt about now that is what needs to be dealt with deal with the existing people who we can actually bring to justice why do we have to keep going on about the past when we can't do anything about it i'm sorry for the victims from the past but the justice for the people from the past can't be done we need to talk about the people from now who need to be uh, brought to justice right now that is more important because something can actually be done well i'm glad you've brought edwina curry into it matthew because back in 2014 she said she regretted ever setting eyes on savile after an inquiry mm. into his abuse of nhs patients criticized the access she allowed him to Broadmoor Hospital. She told The Guardian she was shocked, surprised, startled, disgusted by the revelations of what he'd done to the patients in high security care, adding that the reports were upsetting for everyone involved. She denied appointing Savile, who was not a doctor or an NHS employee, to a governance task force that took charge of Broadmoor in 1988 and stressed that she was only responsible for that portfolio for around four months. Well, so Edwina like Curry, um, Edwina Curry, and Savile. Um, I do have. Um, in 2014, she voiced her regret. Now I know Edwina Curry. I've met her on numerous occasions. I know her daughter Susie Curry. Um, she, Susie Curry, is a perfectly nice person who got sucked into her mother's mad world um i haven't seen her in years but um you know in 2014 she said she was shocked surprised startled disgusted da, 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 da. you know um she was only the responsible for around four months in 1988 when this all occurred now um edwina curry gave the keys to broadmoor to that monster she allowed him in edwina curry is a lady of questionable taste. Edwina Curry is a woman who had an affair with John Major. Now, John Major um, is actually a decent gentleman beneath it all, but I don't need to go into politics of that. But to have an affair with John Major or Edwina Curry, one of you has got to be completely weird. 
frankly, they are an odd union and a very strange pair. So um, I don't particularly like that. But honestly, this woman, Curry, uh, you know, she was supportive of Savile's promises to confront the Prisoners' Officers Association about working practices. She said, he is an amazing man and has my full confidence. She said that herself. That is out of the the mouth of Edwina Curry. Mrs. Curry appointed this monster to be a person who was allowed the keys to a prison. She is cuckoo. Mrs. Curry curried eggs and all the rest of it, and all the damage she did to the British farming industry Shame on Mrs. Curry. Mrs. Curry can stick with GB News and all the rest of whatever she does now and lives within a windmill or whatever she does with her ex-policeman oh. husband, who is also, you know, there we are. I, I, I do not wish Mrs. Curry well. Mrs. Curry is tasteless and her curried eggs, we don't want them. Thanks. Bye. Bye, I'd, bye. Like add, bye. I'd, like to, I'd like to add to that that there was an NHS inquiry... And they found that senior civil servant Cliff Graham appointed Savile to the managerial role, but Edwina Curry retrospectively rubber stamped the decision. So, right there. Yes, M M Mrs. Curry is a complete piece of junk. She is a disgrace. She should go down in history as one of the worst politicians. She was not loved by Margaret Thatcher, Margaret did not like her. Um, she might claim she was, but um, I can tell you my friend Christine Hamilton cannot stand Edwina Curry. Um, I can tell you lots of other people from the Conservative Party could not stand Edwina Curry. They were glad when she was gone. She was a useless, terrible politician. Same with John and Major. she was not suitable. I'm guessing interference in the background. I do apologize for the noise about, but somebody doesn't John like John Major. Major no, rubbish. Um, we don't like John Major either, but that's another matter. That All right, so this brings us to Broadmoor. Broadmoor, and yes. Ac ac according to some experts, and there's a strange relationship between the serial killer Peter Sutcliffe and Jimmy Savile, whereby that Savile was questioned about one of the murders and some people have theorized that the corpse was left outside of Savile's apartment as a nod a kind of offering a, in homage to Savile do you think there's any truth to any of this because they did have a strange odd friendly relationship when they were in Broadmoor together well um the the strange bit in Broadmoor is about Frank Bruno and they introduced he he introduced Frank Bruno innocently. Mister Mister Bruno is not guilty of anything, and Mister Bruno should not be pilloried for anything. He he was taken there, and he met this man. He didn't know who he was. I don't think Mister Bruno did anything wrong. They were photographed all three of them together. Now that does not mean Mister Bruno is guilty of a single thing, but um. I think Mr. Uh, Sir Jimmy Savile probably had a secret liking for uh, uh, Peter Sutcliffe. Perhaps he admired him because he thought, you know, here's someone who behaved in a depraved way just like himself. And, you know, these lunatics and, you know, we went to that crime conference, you and I, and we met, we met that very strange man who I won't say his name, but, you know, when you go to these kind of when you meet these kind of people, well, weird people who, like the people we met at the crime conference, who, you know, you get these characters who are obsessive about something, they, they, they wrap themselves into a story, and once they become part of it, I think Savile probably admired Sutcliffe. I think he, he, probably thought. The things that he'd done, he hadn't managed to do himself because, as far as we're aware, Savile never actually committed a murder. We don't know if he committed a murder. He is, all we know is Savile was an abuser, but, but Sutcliffe was obviously a serial killer, which is a 
slightly different level of crime. So I think that he probably had some admiration for him or something. He probably was thinking, you know, I'd like to be like you or I want to be in, you know, be in my gang like, uh, you know, the other one came out with, with his silly song, you know, there we go. So I that's that's where I would see that sitting. Did you know that Leeds Police took a cast of Jimmy Savile's teeth after teeth marks were found on Irene Richardson's body, which was just a few hundred metres from Savile's, one of his properties? Um, well, Jimmy Savile was never actually charged with any crime during his life. Um, well, I think that um, Savile was obviously never convicted or charged with anything he cannot be held accountable for that because it's too late now but um yes there was obviously some weirdness going on between him and this peter Sutcliffe because of their relationship subsequently at broadmoor there was obviously some kind of admiration on the part of savile for a start um for Sutcliffe because that's why he took Frank Bruno to him. Um but that was a very nasty thing to do to Frank Bruno. Um whether Savile was a killer also I do not know. I we cannot possibly answer that question at this stage because you and I don't know any of the evidence but but the man was clearly a monster who abused men women boys girls children dead corpses people with cancer he didn't care who he went after he was indiscriminate in his abuse and he tried to blame you know it all on his mother the duchess as he called her i did not realize until today that you know she, she he was the seventh child that's I thought he was an only child. I thought that maybe was what explained it. I didn't know any of that. Um, but that devotion to his mother was very, very odd. And he was very, very odd in so many different ways. And yes, Peter Sutcliffe, um, he obviously had some kind of sick fetish about him or something. I don't know what it was and we will never know. And that is the thing about these programs. They're all very well making these programs, but they don't really help us understand the truth. We don't know the truth. We will never know the truth of that monster. Um, but what we should do is learn from that monster and deal with the current monsters who are still alive, who are still able to be brought to justice. And, you know, his driver, Tourette, the dreadful Ray Tourette, he died as well. And he's another creep. And, you know, why don't we bring some of the other people who were associated with him to justice? That's, that would be more useful than all these programs about, you know, some dead man who's, frankly, well, what are we going to do with him? We're not going to do anything that's going to change anything, are we? So why don't we bring to justice somebody who can be brought to justice? It would be much more useful. So just to round off this bit about Sutcliffe then. So in Broadmoor, Savile was instantly pally with Sutcliffe after he was moved to the secure hospital after the murder spree from 75 to 81. And there were calls to f probe whether Savile and Sutcliffe were friends before the murderer was caught. Professor Wilson said, at first sight, mm -hmm. the suggestion that Savile might be connected with the crimes committed by Sutcliffe will seem far-fetched. Yet predatory people are the awful products of common forces which, in their case, were allowed to develop unchecked. Both inhabited a world where men were encouraged to take whatever they wanted by force mm. and where girls and women were seen as things to be used and discarded. They used violence instead of intimacy to express their inner demons. Wow. Well, they they are sick in the head people, and they well they were sick in the head people. They're dead now, of course, but these people, you know, we 
we should move the focus, as I say, on to people who can actually now be brought to justice. I, I don't see the point of raking over these old coals, as sad as it is for the people who were victims of them. We're not going to get anywhere by doing this. It's not going to change the world. It is more sensible to go after those that can still be caught. And I can tell you, there's a lot of powerful people in this world who have got away with too much for too long. And it is jolly well time that those people were brought to justice. And that is what I continue to call out. You know, a certain old man who caused me a lot of trouble today, Bernard Eccleston, has been found guilty today of fraud. He is a 91-year-old man, and he is today put in a guilty plea to fraud. And he has been sentenced to 17 months, suspended for two years in prison. Now, this man has defrauded Britain of, of £653 million, pounds, which he paid back on Monday morning. There are people out there in this world who are bad. And he is a bad man. And I can now say Bernard Eccleston is a convicted criminal and a convicted fraudster. His children, Petra and Tamara, are the daughters of a convicted criminal and a convicted fraudster. Nobody can stop me saying that on YouTube or anywhere else. These kind of people, bad people, they think they can get away with it. Well, I'm not scared of anyone, but honestly, in the case of Savile, Savile, vile, and we must remember the bit vile, it's the associates. Now, Harris is dead. Nothing more can be done about him. Max Clifford, dead. Max Clifford's daughter, who dared to try and sue me, a dreadful piece of toe rag she was, she's dead. Now, um, all of these people should be remembering this. Sometimes justice will get you in the end. And I hope that we can bring to justice some of the ones that are still living, because that whole group of people, you have to look at that Marbella set, the Barbados set. Just look at who holidayed with who. As I always do, I draw maps. Mm. And, you know, you know about my maps, but I will find you a map. I will not show it to... There you go, a map. It doesn't... I haven't shown it for long enough that you can see any name. But that is what I do. I can connect the dots. Now, why can't the authorities connect the dots? This is what needs to be done. And some of these people who still live, who are still out there, they're just as bad as the ones who are dead, but they are protected. That is my problem with this horrible, murky mess. That is the only thing I have to say about it. Bring the living ones to justice whilst you still can. And we don't care that the British prisons have no space. Bernie Eccleston has been able to pay off his £653 million because there's no space in a British prison for him. This man committed a, a, an offence. He is a convicted criminal as of today. He has been convicted. He pled guilty himself. He admits he's a criminal. But he will not go to prison because there's no room in British prisons for these people. And that sets a precedent. So if you're a tax evader, what are you going to do? If you want to pay back the bill, oh, well, pay it back. You won't have to go to prison. That is shameful and disgraceful on the part of the British government. That is appalling. I loathe and detest the Conservative government for doing that. They should be ashamed of themselves. They're meant to be the party of justice, 
There's no justice there. You got sent to prison for what you did. You were made to, to pay your time for your crime. You admit you'd committed a crime. You went to prison. Mr. Eccleston has admit, admitted he committed a crime. He just has to pay a bill and he gets 17 months suspended for two years. Wow. So he won't be allowed to travel. Oh, well, hard luck, Bernie. Well, dirty Bernie, I hope I hope you, you, your inability to travel stops you going to your little villa in Stad and all the rest of it and Brazil. And I hope I hope you you can't get on your private jet and your stupid yacht that you're trying to sell, which is totally overpriced and nobody wants because it's ghastly and it's as ugly as you are. You're a poisonous. Here is a word from today's sponsor, Aura. If you Google someone, you can find out all kinds of personal information about them. This information is accessible because of data brokers who profit by selling your information to robocallers, telemarketers, spammers. You can use my link, https dot dot forward slash forward slash aura dot com. Aura is A-U-R-A forward slash Sean Atwood, S-H-A-U-N-A-T-T Wood to try two weeks for free and see how many data brokers are sharing your info. Also linked in my description box on this YouTube version or scan the QR code on the screen. Aura also monitors your emails and passwords to see if they were involved in a data breach and exposed on the dark web and gives you the recommendations on what to do. Aura has almost every internet safety tool you'll ever need all inside one app. And I say, cheers to you getting 17 months suspended. <laughs> so there we go. Next question, man. Next question. What did you think of when Louis uh, met Jimmy? Um, well, I, I've spoken about Louis met Jimmy in the past with you. And I always said the key question was when they were in the back of the Range Rover or whatever it was, or the whatever car it was. I think it was a Range Rover. And he said, um, Jimmy, people say um, many things about you. And he, he and he said, they can say whatever they want, but it, they're not going to get away with it. I'll bring them all down with me. And that was the telling moment. And that was over 10 years ago. And, you know, my friends, the Hamiltons, made a program with Louis Farouk also. And they respected Louis Farouk. And they got on well with Louis Farouk. Louis Farouk is a great documentary maker i think he's very talented he is an able and wonderful gentleman and i thought that that remark in the back of that car he was the one that got it you know andrew neil said he you know he criticized him he didn't go far enough but louis Farou got it that one moment in that car when he said you know, people say things about you, Jimmy. He he was a very wicked, evil man. And so many people didn't ask questions. They chose not to ask questions because it didn't suit them to ask questions. And that is appalling and that is wrong. Do you think that... Savile outwitted Louis in, in some of it because I'll, I'll give you an example. So Louis was asking him about his interest in kids and Savile said, we live in a very funny world and it's easier for me as a single man to say I don't like children because that puts a lot of salacious tabloid people off the hunt. And then Louis says, is that basically so the tabloids don't pursue this whole is, is he or isn't he line? And Savile replies, oh, I, how do they know whether I am or not? How does anyone know whether I am? Nobody knows whether I am or not. I know I'm not. That's my policy, and it's worked a dream. He, he knew how to manipulate everybody, and that's what he did. He was a genius of manipulation. He knew how to play the benefactor and the victim in his own regard. He knew how to destroy and protect himself at the same time. This was a man, 
so devious that he had that dreadful woman called Tanya Gold, who is a Daily Mail, she was a Daily Mail journalist. I think she works as a spectator now. She also has had threatened me in the past. Um, she is a, a, a dreadful person herself. But she, oh, she loved and adored him. Um, and she fell for his stories. And she went and sat in his flat with him and said, oh, what a kindly old gentleman he was and all the rest. And that is how he did it. He had his Monday club, the people from the police, they would come round and he would give them drinks and he would give them his company. And they thought, oh, this kindly, wonderful gentleman who was famous and, oh, he gave us our company. So then they thought, well, we'll get, turn a blind eye to you. This is the man was at the same time was going around with a Raymond Terrett with a Ford Fiesta van, which had a mattress in the back of it. And you can imagine what went on on that mattress. That mattress no doubt contained a lot of contaminated evidence that should have probably been dragged before a courtroom. And he had a Range Rover with a mattress in the back of it. This man, he had free reign because he knew how to trick them. He played the game, and his game, the deviousness of him, was his making. That was his monstrosity, but it was also his position of power. And he just could continue because he was beloved by the nation because they thought, oh, this kind old man who gives out, you know, badges to little children and gets lets them have you know go and see the wizard of oz or whatever anything else he could get for them or he he was pure evil that is all we can say of this man and it should be remembered and it should be go down in history as that that's all he was he even joked, Matthew, that it was hard to get girls into his Rolls Royce because it was intimidating. And that's why he had an inconspicuous van that he could easily get the girls in. Yes, well, he, well he, he, in one episode, he took a child into Buckingham Palace in the back of a Ford Fiesta. Because he thought that was the way to do it. And he thought it was fun. And he thought he could get Prince Philip involved. But the Queen's private secretary criticised it. So... He didn't get away with that one. But the man is a monster. The man was a monster. He was, he's a monster and a monster and should not be celebrated in any way. So Louis Thoreau then, years later, he said, at the time of the documentary, I'd done my best to be tough with Savile. I knew he was weird and with all his mannerisms, rather irritating. I had no interest in making a soft piece about Jimmy, the charity fundraiser. The dark rumours of being unemotional, of having a morbid interest, uh, were one of the reasons I'd taken him on as a subject. I wanted to get the goods on Savile. The trouble was, I had no clear sense of what those goods were. Well, he really ought to have done more research, I would say. I don't think he should be given fair reign to say all that kind of nonsense now. Um, he spent a lot of time with him. He must have had a lot of research done before they started doing the programme. Why did he not do more? I don't think that that is a fair, valid excuse, but um, I did watch his programme at the time, and I remember it, and I remember the, bit, the, the scene where he asked that question, and I thought that was the most important question that was ever asked, whilst the, man, the, the monster was alive. Now... Why didn't he ask more? He had the opportunity to ask more. He should have tried harder. I don't think he tried hard enough. I mean, Savile was poking fun at him, it seemed, and telling him basically that he had so much power that yep. he could raise, raise people's careers like his and, and crash, smash them right back down. Well, exactly as I said, you know, that's what I remember, the scene from that car, that car journey to Scotland. And, you know, that's the very same cottage where he took the then Prince Charles and all the rest of it. And, you know, this man just thought he could do anything he wanted wherever he wanted. He thought he was bigger than God. 
And, you know, this is a man who had himself buried in a gold coffin and at a 45 degree angle so he could face the sea. He's clearly cuckoo and delusional. And he talked about tying someone up in a basement, didn't he, and torturing them? Um, I'm not sure about that, but um, yeah, he's sure telling he's Louis. Here. He was telling Louis about his nightclub days. Oh, and if people got out of order, they'd take him into the basement and tie him up yeah. and and give him a. a well, he a did have going. his terrible Ray, Raymond Terrett, the driver, who was then subsequently jailed himself. He's a very he was a very wicked person, and that was all to do with his days on the Northern Club circuit. You know, terrible, absolutely wicked behaviour. Have you watched Savile on This Is Your Life where he deflects certain questions? One by he stops to eat a banana, another he lights up a cigar and thinks for 10 seconds. It takes him 10 seconds. Well, the cigar was a distraction technique, wasn't it? The cigar was definitely his key little tool in his little distraction box. So, yes, that's what he was good at doing. Um, he was very, very, very wicked and... Um, appalling in his antics and you know that is not correct um, that he was able to get away with that Right so is there anything about Savile you think I've missed out Matthew? I don't think so I think we've covered quite a lot this evening and um, it's been a pleasure to chat with you about it and uh, there we go Indeed so please let the viewers know what they can look forward to at the Steeple Times in the coming week well, I will be talking tonight about uh, about Bernard Eccleston, because Bernard Eccleston deserves to be spoken about. I'll also be speaking about someone who I won't name the associates, but I'll be speaking about the fine of $1.8 million awarded to Jess Staley today of Barclays. And I will be speaking about the uh, crooked daughter of um, Captain Tom, so there are the three things that are on my agenda currently. And um, I will be here in the south of France for a little few more days longer and then coming back to London to deal with all sorts of matters, including Bernard Eccleston. There we go. Coming back to London with a lovely tan by the looks of things as well. Well, I'm a bit burnt, but there we go. <laughs> <laughs> So orange orange peel, <laughs> as well as orange. I wore the orange jumper especially for your audience, but orange peel, perhaps. Yeah. But there we go. So, so please support Matthew's important work. His links are in the description box below this video. We're going to air this one before the reckoning episode three. So enjoy oh, nice. episode three and join us for our reaction videos after episodes three and four this week. Take care, everyone in the world. Thank you for watching. Cheerio. Thank you, Thank you very much and good night. Thank you.